Today we're going to talk about triangle angle relationships. There are a couple of relationships that are very important for you to know. The first relationship that we're going to talk about today is that the sum of all three angles of a triangle will always add up to be 180 degrees. Let's take a look at the first two example triangles that I've drawn. The top left example is a equilateral equiangular triangle. You can tell that it's equiangular because all three angles are each 60 degrees. So if we were to add up each of those angles, 60 degrees plus 60 degrees plus 60 degrees, you'd see that they add up to be 180 degrees, just like the theorem says. Let's look at the triangle on the right. It's a right triangle. A right triangle, you know, has one 90 degree angle, which is denoted by this box. And then it has these two 45 degree angles for its right angle. If you add those up together, you'll see that it adds up to be a 180 degree. Another special thing to note about this right triangle is that with any right triangle, the two angles of the legs will always be complementary. If you remember, complementary means that they're going to add up to be 90 degrees. You'll notice that that's true because of this theorem. If this is already a 90 degree angle right here, then 180 degrees, which is the sum of all three angles of the triangle, minus that initial 90 degrees, leaves you only 90 degrees to work with to draw the other two angles, meaning that they will always add together to be 90 degrees, complementary. The other relationship that we want to discuss today is that the exterior angle formed by a line connected to one leg of a triangle will always be equal in measure to the sum of the triangle's two interior angles furthest from that exterior angle. That's a lot, so we're going to break it down step by step. First, let's talk about the first part of that sentence. The exterior angle formed by a line connected to one leg of a triangle. Well, this line right here that I've just highlighted in blue happens to be connected to this leg of the triangle. You know it's a straight line because if you were to add these two angles, 60 degrees and 120 degrees together, you'd get 180 degrees, and 180 degrees is a straight line. So here is a line that we've connected to one leg of a triangle. This is going to be the exterior angle formed by that line. So I'm going to underline this in blue. The exterior angle formed by a line connected to one leg of a triangle. So you know that that angle that I've pointed to in blue is that exterior angle. Now who are these other two angles, these two interior angles that are furthest from that exterior angle? Well, there's only three interior angles, and the two furthest from that exterior angle are going to be this guy in green and this guy. And you'll notice that if we added those two angles together, 60 and 60, they're going to add up to be 120 degrees, which is the sum of that exterior angle. So the exterior angle formed by a line connected to that leg of the triangle is always going to be equal in measure to these two angles furthest from that exterior angle. That's an important relationship. You're going to see that a lot in future problems. The last relationship that we're going to discuss today is that if you have a triangle that has two angles that are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angle of those two triangles must also be congruent. So let's take a look at the diagram and see if we can't find those first two angles that are congruent in each of these triangles. I'm going to highlight that section in red. Two angles that are congruent to two angles of another triangle. Well, obviously, this angle from this triangle and this angle from this triangle must be congruent because they were denoted when we began the problem with the little red marks there. The other congruent angle that we're looking for right here is this 90 degree angle. Now it was given to us on the top triangle, but not provided for the bottom one. You just have to realize that with vertical angles, that makes these two angles congruent to each other. So both 90. So now we have this angle and this angle that are congruent, and these two angles that are congruent, these two 90s. So we know that if we have one triangle, this one, and another triangle, number two here, 
that already have two congruent angles, then their third angle, which I'm going to highlight in green, and their third angles must be congruent. That's a very important relationship. You're going to see that in a lot of problems.